Today we're going to take a look at a double replacement reaction and many uh, high school books talk about that as one of the four main types of reaction. I prefer to call it a precipitate reaction. That's much better because we're going to be forming a precipitate here. The materials we're going to use are silver nitrate, which we have in this bottle right here, a silver nitrate solution. I think it's one-tenth molar. Not very concentrated, but we have some silver nitrate there. In this test tube, this big honking test tube, we have some potassium iodide, Ki. Now what we did was we took some solid, and I'm going to point to this, we took some solid potassium iodide. That would be represented by this model right here, potassium iodide. Potassium's the blue one, the yellow one is going to be our iodide. So this is just a model, and this is the bond, if you will, this piece of paper that holds it together. So that's one. We put it into water, okay? So now we have potassium iodide that's aqueous. Now keep in mind, when you see that in the book, aqueous really means the following. Means potassium ions and iodide ions separated. There's two separate species swimming around in solution. They're having a good time, all right? That's what's in here. In this bottle right here is a silver nitrate. I took solid silver nitrate, and that's represented by this model. The red is the silver, the black is the nitrate. And think of that nitrate polyatomic ion as a big blob. We're going to treat it as one thing. It really makes your life a lot easier when looking at double replacement reactions or precipitate reactions. It really does, most of the time. So there's our nitrate, there's our silver. Okay, this is the solid. There's the bond that holds the nitrate polyatomic ion and the silver together. So you have an aqueous solution in this bottle. Now keep in mind, both of these, there's mainly water in both of these. These ions are dissolved in solution. The silver nitrate aqueous means you have silver ions and nitrate ions separate. It's an aqueous solution. It's an ionic solution. These are separated, two ions silver ion and the polyatomic nitrate ion. All right, so I've blathered on enough about this, so let's actually do the reaction. I'm gonna come around the other side. By the way, potassium iodide is used in some iodized salts, use some of this material in the salts, and silver nitrate may have been the first chemical you were ever exposed to. They used to put it in babies' eyes when they were born. Very dilute solution. So we've got some silver nitrate here. We're going to add it to this. And we see something interesting happening. That's what's called a precipitate. You can see it settling to the bottom. That's why they call it a precipitate. It's like it's raining in the test tube. In this case, little blob, yellowish white blobs appear to be settling down. The test tube next to it, right here, has some that's been sitting overnight. You see how this rushes down to the bottom to form the precipitate? Overnight, all this cloudiness would disappear and we'd be still left with some potassium iodide that's unreacted. Okay, so we're forming a precipitate. I like that, so let me put in one more slug so the camera can follow it all the way down. You know, it's got to be more interesting than mole problems at the moment, right? All right, there it is. Big blob. A nice little rainstorm of. And that's what we have to figure out. What is that rainstorm that's coming down? What is the precipitate? So we're going to take a look at our equation here. And I've kind of given it away with this, but let's see how we could figure it out. If we're going to mix these two, and again, these are separate ions. The silver can react with the iodide, the metal with the nonmetal, and this metal with the nonmetal. So my possible precipitates would be potassium nitrate and silver iodide. We'd have to pick out which one. Well, I've given it away by writing the S there, but here's what you would do. You would say to yourself, self, I'm gonna look in the solubility table. And you would find out that silver iodide would be insoluble. Okay, what's the easy way? There's a better way. Instead of 
looking in that table, you, there's a few simple rules you ought to know. It ought to be part of your human Rolodex of knowledge. All nitrates are soluble. That automatically says that this compound's going to be aqueous. This has to be your precipitate. Ta-da! Also, all potassium or alkali metals are also soluble. So this is definitely not going to be your precipitate. So this is what's left over. Let's do this on a molecular level so you can get a feel for what's going on. Do you remember what I said I have here? This is my potassium iodide. This is my silver nitrate, okay? I'm going to mix these two in this beaker. Here's the water. When I put this in, the solids will dissolve and the ions will react, or at least some of them. So let's do that. This is soluble paper that I have here. There we go. Oh, amazing. This is my precipitate. See that? It's stuck together. They've glommed onto each other. Silver iodide laying on the bottom. And these are the two ions. They're going to be in solution. Now, there is a problem with this model. <laughs> the ions of sil uh, potassium nitrate don't float to the top. They are dispersed equally throughout the solution. But there's a flaw in this model, as there are in all models. But still, it makes a good visual representation of what's happening on the molecular level. So, to sum it up, this is a double replacement reaction. Perhaps a better name would be a precipitate reaction. And for that, it would help if you knew some simple, basic solubility rules that your teacher will give you. Or that you, as the instructor, know already. Thank you.